in Christ, the two passages read to us today centered on the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. When perilous times occur, many ask, why is it that God seemingly allows good people to suffer? Why bad men go unpunished and they continue to prosper? People also tend to query God when the wicked of the world continue to oppress the righteous and the latter seem not only powerless, but apparently hopeless. And many are wont to ask in their distress situation, my God, my God, where is thy face concerning my life? My Lord, my God, and my Savior, why art thou forsaking me? Many see God as a super pacifist, too gentle, too loving, too kind, too good, too mild to judge and punish the world and its inhabitants for their callous disregards for his commands, for his ways, for his righteousness. However, our God is ever righteous, ever faithful, and forever gracious. He will not always appear remote, but we deal with the unrighteousness of men when he reconciles all our hands on that last day of the Lord. He will also recompense all those who have remained obedient to his command and his ways. And that is what the first lesson is telling us this day. The first three verses of the first Surely lesson. The day is coming. This day is coming. It will burn like a furnace. Yes. All the arrogance and every evil, evil doer yes. will be stubble. Yes. And that day that is coming yes. will set them on fire. Yes. Says the Lord Almighty. Says the Lord. Continue. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. Yes. But for you who revere my name, yes. the son of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. Amen. And you will go out and leap like hogs released from the stall. Yes. Amen. Then you will trample down the wicked. Amen. There will be ashes under the soles of your feet. Yes. On the day when I do this thing. Says the Lord Almighty. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Brethren in Christ, the day of the Lord has been severally described in the scripture as a period of darkness and sudden destruction, a period of utter, dis utter despair and gloom, a period of characterized chiefly by stress and distress. I said a period of trumpet and alarm against fenced cities and against the high towers. against fence cities and against high towers. These are portrayed by prophet Joel and prophet Isaiah in the book of Joel, chapter 2, the first three verses, then you go to 10 and 11, and somebody else after that, read Isaiah 13, 6, 7, and 8. Joel 2, 1, 2, and 3. He said, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm at voice of grace. A celestial church of Christ worldwide. I want to continue. Let all who live in the land tremble. Yes. For the day of the Lord is coming. Are you looking yourself as righteous? Are you looking yourself as holy? Are you counting yourself as oh, I am the one that is perfect? Continue. It is close at hand. It is close at hand. A day of darkness and gloom. Yes. Yes. Like dawn spreading across the mountains. Yes. A large and mighty army comes, mm -hmm. such as never was of old. Yes. Nor ever will be in ages to come. Yes. Before them fire the vows. Mm -hmm. Behind them in flame blazes. Yes. Before them the land is like the garden of Eden. Yes. Behind them a desert waste. Mm. Nothing escapes them. Nothing escapes them. They have the appearance of horses. Yes. They gallop along like cavalry. Yes. With a noise like that of chariots. Go to verse 10. Before them, the earth shakes. He said, Before them, the earth shakes. The sky trembles. The, the sky is tremble, yes. The sun and moon are darkened. Yes. And the stars no longer shine. Mm -hmm. The Lord thunders at the head of his army. Continue. His forces are beyond number. Yes. And mighty are those who obey his command. Mighty are those who obey his command. The last leg. The, the day of the Lord is great. The day of the Lord is great indeed. It is dreadful. It is dreadful. Who can endure that day of the Lord? Isaiah 13, 6 to 8. Call ye. When? For yes? The day of the Lord is at hand. The day of the Lord is near. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. Yes? Therefore shall all hands be faint. Yes? And every man's heart shall melt. Yes? And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrow shall take over them. Mm -hmm. They shall be in pain as a woman that... They will read with pain as women in labor. Yes. Their faces shall be as flames. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. 
Hallelujah. The great day of the Lord is near. The great day of the Lord is near. Is near. Is near. And said greatly. Is greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord. Even that voice of the day of the Lord, we can even hear it. Continue, my father. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. Yes. That day is a day of wrath. That day is a day of wrath. A day of trouble and distress. Yes. A day of wasteness. A day of wasteness. And desolation. Yes. A day of darkness and gloominess. A day of darkness and gloominess. A day of cloud and thick darkness. Yes. A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fence city. It is a day of trumpet and alarm against fence cities. And against the high towers. And against the people in high places. Again, thank you, sir. May the Lord continue to enrich you. Amen. Brethren in Christ, the day of the Lord cometh. It is a day of darkness and sudden destruction. It is a day where even people who are living behind IFS, see IFS walls, are not secured. The memory of the earthquake and tsunami that hit Japan last year, March, is still very fresh in our minds. The earthquake triggered powerful tsunami waves that reached a height of about 133 feet and was moving about 10 miles an hour. It caused a lot of catastrophes. A nuclear accident with high melt downs, tearing bridges and ships, sweeping roads and rail lines, pulling down all buildings along this way. We all saw it live on television, and people that have blood in their vein wept like babies on that day. At the end of the devastation, it lasted only two hours. But about 16,000 people were confirmed dead, 6,000 were confirmed injured, until today, 3,000 were still confirmed missing. Hallelujah. The rumblings of that earthquake and tsunami shifted the axis of the heart by about four to ten inches. Now, this horrible experience is like a child's play compared to the coming day of the Lord, that dreaded day of the Lord that is painted in gloom and despair. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brethren in the Lord, the day that is coming is definite. It is eminent and also imminent. It is indeed a day that is dreadful. Who can endure it? This sermon, however, is not to create fear or panic among brethren. But as Peter put it, to stimulate you into awesome thinking Lest you are caught on our ways. Lest I am caught on our ways. Lest you are still frolicking all about, thinking, oh, the day of the Lord, after all, they've said it about 2,000 2, 2, years ago. Nothing is happening. So let me go out and be part of the world, and when it is the 11th hour, I will quickly run back. They won't close the door and voice of grace. This is the house of the Lord. They will accept me as I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And like our father put it, the signs of the end time are daily imagined with spiritual precision. We have the false prophets and pastors, churches springing up here and there, preaching gospel, cheap gospels, and justifying homosexuality. Hallelujah. The people of the world are even now walking on with upside down with their head. And most prominent personalities are even coming out of the closet declaring their sexuality. And then you continue to wonder, where are we going? All you could do is open wide your mouth because you can't shout. You can't even complain because you don't know the person that is near to you. Not only that, lots of believers have abandoned the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. And religious deception. Hallelujah. 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 Peter wrote in our second lesson that scoffers will come. First of all, 
Paul. Yes, go to the first, second lesson. You must understand that in the last days. Go to verse three. First of all. Yes. You must understand that in the last days. Yes. Scoffers will come. Scoffers will come. Scoffing and following their own evil desires. Yes. They will say. Yes. Where is this coming? He promised. Where is this coming? That was promised you and I. And ever since our father died, everything goes on as it is. My great grandfather was. Yeah, when they were saying Jesus is going to come now. Continue. But they deliberately forget that long ago by God's word. Yes. The heavens existed. Yes. And the earth was formed out of water and by water. Yes. By this water also, the world of that time was deluged and yes. destroyed. Yes. By the same word, yes. the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire. Yes. Being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. Yes. But do not forget this one thing. Do not forget this one thing, brethren in the Lord. Dear friends. Yes. The day it with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. Yes. And a thousand years are like a day. Yes. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. Yes. As some understand slowness. Yes. He is patient. Yes. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish. Yes. But everyone to come to repentance. Yes. But the day of the Lord it will come like a thief. The day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. Yes. The elements will be destroyed by fire. Yes. And the earth and everything will need to be laid bare. Yes. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you be? Thank you. He said the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Where is he going to meet you? The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. He's rather patient with you. He's rather patient with me. That my hands are full of sin. That your hand, your heart is full of iniquity. He does not want anyone to perish, rather to come to repentance. And what is the import of this message unto you and I? It is not to scare you. It is not to create panic, but to stimulate you into awesome thinking. Reminiscent over your life. Think about those things that you have done that you are right. And more essentially that needs correction. Look at yourself. Search your mind. Are you doing it right? Assuming the Lord comes today, am I going to be raptured? Assuming the Lord comes today, where will be my wife? Assuming the Lord comes today, where will be my children? Are you, are you worshiping the Lord and leaving your family at home? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As the head of the family, you are responsible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The day of the Lord comes like a thief. Where are you going to be? Are you going to be like the wise virgin that waited on the Lord and had oil in their lamp? Or are you going to say, oh, we have been waiting here since last Sunday. Nothing is happening. At least maybe Christ will delay for another one week. And just as you have you are finished talking, the Lord comes. He comes like a thief. Without warning. Brethren in the Lord, we should therefore be mentally alert of these times and imbibe the spirit of self-control. If you have been frolicking, gyrating from one area to the other, you have to imbibe the spirit of self-control. Always think, when you go to bed in the night, assuming the Lord comment this night, am I okay? Assuming the Lord comments in the morning, am I going to be found worthy? Let us hold on to our faith, loving one another unconditionally as Christ loved the church that he gave his life for her. Let us love one another, not with lips, but with your heart, unconditionally. Do not come around and give me a big hug. And at the air, at, the, at my back, you continue to, don't, don't mind him. <laughs> and the moment you see me, imagine again from the back, oh, Alakba, how are you? Oh, that's your salmon. I say, what happened to it? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us reassert our trust in Jesus Christ, the last hope of our salvation. Without Christ, you are going nowhere. Even if you live up to a thousand years like Methuselah. 
And let each and every one of us be fervent in prayer in order to resist the temptation and the influence of this sinful world. Quite frankly, you people that are living in this area, you are enjoying. If you go to Los Angeles, you will see temptation. <laughs> if you come to New York, you will see temptation. And if you go to so big cities, you will see temptation. And that's why the Bible also tells us, deliver us from the evil. Because the temptation are there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must also guide against those little foxes that trip, but are painful and damaged. Those things, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, God knows. Oh, we are under the grace. We are celestials. <coughs> they are little foxes. You think they don't matter, but they trip. And they are very painful and could be damaged. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Most importantly, let us resist Satan and his squads in their schemes and evil machinations of certain brethren against one another. Let us resist Satan and his squads with all our power and our strength so that we don't fall short of God's glory. Christ said, at the last day, because iniquity shall abound, iniquities shall abound on the last days, the love of many shall wash cold. I don't even like the way they are doing in that church again. I don't even like, and then you start migrating from one parish to another. And when they ask you, which parish are you now going? We are celestials. <laughs> Worldwide. Hallelujah. He said, the love of many shall wash cold, but he that shall endure unto the end, him alone, she alone, shall be saved. Are you going to be saved? Yes. Yes. Brethren in Christ, let us therefore remain steadfast on this path of salvation, so that the promise that was given in our first lesson will come to fruition. And let somebody read again that first lesson. Malachi 2, 3, and 4. Malachi 4, 2, 3, and 4. But for, who, for you who revere my name. He said, for you who revere my name. Who have, this, hallelujah, who have decided to separate yourself from the world? Who are not doing those things of the world? Who think, okay, at least I'm striving. But who are actually striving? <coughs> Focusing on the altar of Christ. Yes. The son of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. He said the son of righteousness and that Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. He said they will come with healing in his wings. Continue. And you will go out and leap like cows released from the storm. Yes. Then you will trample down the wicked. You will trample down the wicked. There will be ashes under the soles of your feet. Those enemies of your parents, of grandparents, that are also pursuing you. He said, you shall, find, you shall look back, you can find them no more. Amen. He told the Israelites, he said, ah. He told Moses, where are we going? Why can't we go back to Egypt and just surrender to this slavery? After all, we, are, we shall continue to live. And when Christ comes, he can save us. But God told them, he said, look back. These people that you are seeing, this war, this chariot that you are looking, you shall see them no more. And so shall it be for each and every one of you. Amen. Continue. Under the soles of your feet, on the day when I do this thing, says the Lord Almighty. Yes. Remember the law of my servant Moses. Remember the law of my servant Moses. And those are the Ten Commandments. The decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for yes. Israel. Thank you. He said, remember the laws that I gave to the Israelites to guide them in their life. And the first thing is that you shall have no other God beside me. And when Christ came, he said, love one another. And above love, there is no other law. So if you love your brethren as yourself, and you have God, and you have no other God beside him, you are not sent an idol to put in your, in your bucket to carry about 
And every morning after you have said, oh, Father, forgive me all my sins. And you remember, oh, I still have something I have to pray to. And you quickly look around and my, my wife is not looking. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You shall have no other God beside me. And you shall love one another as Christ loved the church and he gave his life for her. After all this, what is? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Finally, brethren in Christ, let us be joyful always and pray continually. Let us continue to walk in close fellowship with the Holy Spirit and let us give thanks to God in all circumstances. It's not only when you get your job that you give thanks to God. It's not only when you receive letter of promotion that you bring thanks of him unto the Lord. It's not only when you receive the news that, oh, that man that has been following you all about at work has been transferred. It's not only then that the Lord is receiving your uh, thanks offering. He said, give thanks to the Lord always, in all circumstances. So even if you have no job, know that the Lord has not forgotten you. Even if you have not received any promotion, know that the Lord has not forgotten you. Even if you are looking for the bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh, know that the Lord has not forgotten you. Even if you are looking for babies to call your own, you have been calling other people's children and say, oh, come and come and do this for me. And they have not labeled you, yeah, yeah, you see. He said, the Lord has not forgotten you. Yes. So come unto the Lord with your thanks in all circumstances. Because the Lord that you have come to serve is righteous, is faithful, and is forever gracious. He will never forsake you. Amen. He said, not an infinite of my word will go unfulfilled, but must accomplish that which I propose. I pray and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. that that prophecy that we are receiving, ah. in the mighty name of Jesus, are coming to fruition. Amen. You shall also bring thanks offering unto the Lord. Amen. Your blessing shall no longer experience any corruption. Amen. Your joy shall be released unto you. Amen. It shall be well with you. Amen. It shall be well with you. Amen. The peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shall continue to abide with each and every one of you. Now, forever. Amen. Amen.